All right, so over the last couple of months, I've been kind of obsessed with bezel inserts for my GMT. You know, I've learned so much that I wanted to share the information with you guys, and hopefully this can serve as sort of a guide for anybody who is shopping for, you know, bezel inserts for the 16710, or, you know, people who are just interested in this kind of stuff anyway i mean you know this is dr rolex phd channel after all so you know presumably you're here because you like these kind of you know little rolex details and idiosyncrasies so i'll jump right in with a couple of terms that we need to you know familiarize ourselves with there are really four terms you need to know so there's fat font there's thin font there's serif and there's sans serif. And starting with fat font, it's the font you see here. It came on my original black bezel for this GMT, but it can be found on all three bezel types, the black, the Coke, and the Pepsi. And you'll see in a minute when I compare it to the thin font, uh, why it's called fat font. It's not because the font is particularly, you know, super fat, which you can find sometimes. And, you know, people are starting to list these bezels as super fat, but super fat or just regular fat, it's, they're all generally considered fat font. Thin font is, as the name suggests, it's thinner font and it's very noticeable after you've seen it, you know, hundreds of times. And this is the font that Rolex or more specifically Rolex Service Center RSC is going to give you if you buy a bezel from them or if you change out your GMT bezel during a service. This is the font that they're making now producing now although I don't know if they're still producing these bezels I, I assume that they are but I guess it is possible that they just made you know a crap ton of them back in the day and they just have a huge supply of them and the theory goes that if the supply runs out one day we'll no longer be able to get these bezels from rolex so that's why these bezel inserts uh have sort of a market price of their own and if you were to track the price of them at like a stock or or like rolex watches themselves they go up over time and they have go gone up and i've watched them go up in the last month or two you know simply because of you know, scarcity, like anything else. So thin font is what's made now, it's what you get from RSC. And as you can see, compared to fat font, it's more narrow, it appears to be taller, and you will never find serifs on a thin font bezel for the 16710. Now, if you go back to like the 1675 or the 16750, you know, I don't know much about those bezels, but I'm pretty sure there are some thinner font bezels with serifs. I mean, those bezels were have even crazier, you know, details and idiosyncrasies. So, you know, we're not talking about those today. We're talking about the 16710. And on 16710 bezels, you will never find serifs. So moving on to serifs, that's our third term. Serifs are these little dashes on the tips of the numerals that sort of give the effect of like they were handwritten, you know? Like when you lift your pen off of the end of your word that you're writing, it leaves that little serif, that little, you know, mark that this was written with a pen, you know. I think that's part of the charm and appeal of the serifs, you know, not to mention that they just have such variance and, you know, they're not made anymore. So to have a, a, a bezel with serifed font is, you know, something significant and, and at least somewhat rare and it's not being made by Rolex anymore. I mean, they're very small, you know, they're little details for us crazy Rolex enthusiasts. And oftentimes these little seemingly insignificant details are what we love so much about anything, but our thing is Rolex. So, uh, you know, I love serifs. I mean, I have been scouring the web for a Pepsi bezel with fat font serif font, you know, and I eventually found found one but it actually doesn't have serifs which I knew about but I had to make a compromise because uh, the fat font serif bezels the Pepsi bezels for the 16710 are just egregiously priced uh, I had to make a compromise and I went with just a fat font sans serif bezel now speaking of sans serif that's our fourth term it's simply the lack of serifs and you will find this on both thin font and fat font bezels. So you've basically got three different font types for these bezels. You have 
fat font serif, which is, you know, the most valuable and, and esteemed of, of all the fonts. Then you have fat font sans serif, which is still valuable because they don't make fat font anymore, but it doesn't have the serifs. And then you have thin font, which will never have serif. So there's no point in saying thin font sans serif. They're all sans serif. And before we get into bezel colors and fading and things like that, there is another font that I've become familiar with via shopping for these online. And I've heard Austin Daniels call them the fish hook twos. And you know, I've classified that font, at least in my mind, as like the fish hook font. And you know, I just don't like this font. And whenever I see a bezel with it, I dismiss it immediately. But I actually don't know how authentic they are. Uh, because when you look at fake bezels, they often have fonts that are at least reminiscent of this fish hook font. But then sometimes when you look at these listings, you know, these inserts are 100% authentic and genuine and they're being sold by, you know, reputable dealers or they'll be on the watch itself, you know, the actual listing of a, of a GMT that's for sale, and it's being listed by a very reputable dealer. You know, a dealer who specifies what type of fonts on the bezel and specifies if it's unpolished, and you know, a dealer who's aware of all these details will list watches with this fish hook font on it. And so that makes me think, well, maybe these are authentic. Maybe they were just sort of a, a, a weird little moment in Rolex history. Maybe they made them for a, a year or two. Um, um, and then they stop making them. I honestly don't know, but I'm not gonna talk about them here today because quite honestly, I think the font is kind of ugly. It looks like kind of warped, like maybe there was a problem with the, the bezel making machine at the time. So I, I kind of just disregard them with my own shopping, so I'm gonna disregard them here as well. So we've seen all three different fonts of bezels. Hopefully you've seen them in my actual pictures of the bezels that I own. I own four bezels and they cover all three of the bezel fonts and all three of the colors, Coke, Pepsi, and all black. Now, like I said with the thin font bezels, the bezels that are being made or at least being you know, given out by RSC today, these bezels started appearing on actual GMT Master 2s, like being sold with these bezels on them. That started happening around 2005, 2006. That's at least what I've sort of gathered from my extensive shopping of GMTs and looking around and looking on the internet. Now it could be a little later. I've seen some listings and things like that that say that all the parts are genuine and original and the wash will be from like 2006 and it'll have a fat font bezel on it. So it's not exactly clear, but I would say to be safe, anywhere between 2003 and 2006 was when they switched from the fat font, whether serif or not serif, that's not the point, they switched from fat font to thin font. And to this day, thin font is what you get from RSC. Now, since we're talking about thin font, let's focus on the Pepsi because the all black, the color is black and there's no real variance in that. The Coke, I'll touch on that and some differences between the colors of the red on the different bezels. But let's talk about the Pepsi because it's kind of the most valuable on the, on the market. So the modern thin font Pepsi bezel, the red is a very nice bright cherry red. I actually really like the red that's used, uh, but the blue in my opinion is just a shade or two dark. You know, unless you're in direct sunlight, you're seeing this bezel as almost black. Honestly, a lot of the times it looks just like a very dark navy. This is a complaint that I hear people say about the Tudor GMT, how the blue is very dark navy. It's not that dark. It's not as dark as that Tudor, but it is pretty dark. I mean, it's it's in sunlight, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful, rich, deep blue and it's it's gorgeous but you know i'm not always out in sunlight if you live a life where you're always out in sunlight and you're usually looking at your watch in direct sunlight then this bezel is going to be great for you because it absolutely shines in the sun but inside indoors with artificial light it really looks black or dark navy which it's it's nice but it's not exactly what i love what I love is the color blue that was used on the fat font bezels. So pre, you know, 2003 to 2006, whenever they changed it, I'm gonna, from now on, I'm just gonna say pre 2003. Just know that it could be from 2003 to 2006. I don't know when, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna say pre 2003 fat font bezels. On these pre 2003 fat font bezels, the color blue is just 
like a half a shade brighter. I mean, I know we're being pedantic here, but I mean, it's these differences, like I said, that, that we obsess over and that we love. Now, an argument can be made that since these are older bezels, they have faded more and they have sort of uh, oxidized or whatever, so the colors have gotten lighter. But I have noticed a general trend of these fat font bezels pre-2003 having a lighter color blue, all right? That's just me. Now, if you look at the, the Pepsi bezel that I got, the fat font Pepsi bezel that I most recently added to my collection, when you compare it to the thin font one, which I got from RSC like two months ago, so this is brand new, this is exactly what you'll get. When you compare it to the thin font, you can see that the blue is definitely a lighter shade of blue, but the red is sort of this pink color. It's this absolutely stunning salmon pink color. I mean, it's, you know, in person, guys, it's unbelievably beautiful, the, the contrast between this sort of brighter blue and also this, you know, faded pink. So one could argue that the reason the blue is slightly lighter than the modern thin font bezel is because the whole bezel in general has been kissed by the sun and it's been washed out. So the red and the blue have been lightened. But to that, I say that if you look at these pre-2003 fat font bezels, if you look at ones that are really faded, you'll notice that the blue is actually fully intact, but the red has faded to like almost a white color. Like you can't even see it. You know, it looks like half a bezel. And so you think, well, how the hell did that happen? I believe that the blue color is the base color of the bezel because on the back of this bezel, this fat font bezel, it's blue. Same with the modern one, it's, it's a blue back. So I believe that the base color of the entire bezel is blue and therefore takes way longer to fade than the red, which I believe is not painted on, but I guess anodized on to the bottom half of the bezel. So yes, it's possible that the blue has faded a little bit, but it's really marginal. And I believe that they just made a lighter shade of blue pre-2003 in these fat font bezels. So I think we've covered the Pepsi. Uh, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments section. I answer almost every comment, uh, especially if it's a question or it's something reasonable, some point that's being made, I will answer it. So please ask me a question if there's something I didn't cover, but I think this is pretty uh, extensive. So moving on to the Coke, the black is the base color of the Coke. So like with the Pepsi, how the blue is the base color, the black is the base color of the Coke. So you won't see crazy fading of the black. You will more see, like with the Pepsi, crazy fading fading or, or extreme fading on the red, if anything. But the black, I don't know how it happens. You know, maybe it's just an, the nature of the black paint or anodized black that they use. But the black of the Coke does tend to fade and it will become sort of this uh, very dark charcoal gray, which is gorgeous, of course. But we need to talk about the difference between fat font, serif or unserif, doesn't matter, fat font Coke bezels and thin font Coke bezels. Now, like with the Pepsi, the thin font Coke is what you get from RSC these days. And the same switch, you know, the same 2003 switch applies to the Coke. They switched all the font from fat to thin around 2003 to 2006. So post 2003 Cokes that you get from RSC now, some of them, not all of them, which is confusing and I, I don't know why this is the case, but I would say it's about 50-50. The Coke bezels that you get from RSC have this very, very dark maroon red color as opposed to the brighter cherry red color of all fat font pre-2003 Cokes. So with the thin font ones, I don't know why it's the case. I've seen plenty of thin font Cokes with that bright cherry red and of course a dark, you know, black, black. But I've also seen just as many Cokes, thin font Cokes with this dark maroon color. Now, that maroon color is really beautiful and I do want one because I have a pre-2003 fat font Coke with serifs. So I'm actually looking for that thin font maroon one uh, just to add it to the collection. It's underpriced or at least it's, you know, 
relatively affordable so it's kind of a good buy but you know if you're looking for the cherry red color that is characteristic of the original GMT or just the, the red that's associated with the GMT or even the red that matches the GM the red GMT hand uh, you're not gonna want the maroon colored one because there's a color inconsistency between it and the red GMT hand the red GMT hand has that cherry red color so you know just be careful of that I'm showing you pictures here hopefully this serves as a reference uh, but if you're gonna buy a thin font bezel or you're gonna get one from RSC Just be aware of the two different types of red color that you get with the coke now with the all black There's pretty much no difference to be honest with you color wise The only thing I'll say is that if it is a thin font black be wary of ones that are super ghosted or super faded because that for sure you know 90% has been done artificially this example that we're looking at here this is one that honestly I'm <laughs> kind of considering buying because I think it's so nice but it's not done naturally this has been done by this seller or by someone uh, so just know that just be aware of that and don't buy it thinking that you're getting like an authentic beaten used patina bezel you know because you're not you're getting one that's been tampered with which again is okay but just be aware of it so hopefully this serves as some sort of a guide for you guys uh, or just interesting information but to recap I'm just gonna quickly go over everything really that you need to know if you want to just know the basics you have three different fonts which are fat font serif fat font sans serif which means no serif and thin font which will never have serifs so there's those three different fonts. All three colors, the Pepsi, the Coke, and the black, have all three of the fonts available. So when you're shopping around, there's gonna be nine different possible combinations of color and font. You know, fat font serif Pepsi, fat font serif Coke, fat font serif black, fat font sans serif Pepsi, fat, you know, down the line, there's nine. Now here is the ranking of those nine bezels in order of how valuable they are on the market, right? Fat font serif Pepsi is number one. Fat font sans serif Pepsi is number two. Thin font Pepsi is number three. Now, even though it's number three, I just think it's it's so ridiculous that it's number three because you can get them from RSC, but a lot of people don't know that. So when they shop on eBay or whatever, they see, oh, Pepsi bezel, I need the Pepsi bezel for my GMT. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll pay $600 for this bezel that you can get from RSC for like 120 bucks. It's like, it's crazy. The, the value of these thin font Pepsi bezel should be 150 bucks. You should not pay a dime more than 150 bucks for them because you should just get them from RSC. But people do, for whatever reason, I don't know. People don't have awareness. So unfortunately, thin font Pepsi is number three. Number four is fat font serif Coke. Number five is fat font sans serif Coke. Number six, I would say is fat font serif of black depending on how fat the font is and how pronounced the serifs are a fat font serif black can be quite valuable so that's number six number seven is thin font coke number eight is fat font sans serif black and number nine is thin font black now seven through nine uh, or even maybe six through nine are debatable I mean you know they're they're pretty much in the same ballpark of price they're between two and four hundred bucks on the secondary market so you know I mean it, it's this is not an exact list but in my mind this is the order of, of value generally speaking and then on top of that like I just mentioned you have different pronunciation of the serifs so really pronounced serifs are considered more valuable really fat font with really pronounced serifs is really valuable and a combination of all these details with let's say like a, a perfectly faded Pepsi like a Pepsi that still has really vibrant blue and vibrant red but it's just like slightly patinaed or maybe it's turned to this sort of pinkish color uh, that's gonna be your most valuable bezel I mean it's it's not an exact science but all of these elements combined in, in whatever their unique way makes that particular bezel more valuable. And that's why I love these bezels, by the way. That's why I love these pre-ceramic GMTs, because look at how much variance there is in this changeable part. I mean, I change the bezel, you know, at least every three, four days. Honestly, I'm obsessed with this shit. So I just, you know, I'm constantly changing the bezel. I made a video about how to change the bezel. 
it's very easy and once you've done it like a few times you are not going to scratch your watch you're not going to damage your watch it's very very easy a, a toddler could do it so don't be afraid to change your bezels you can do it uh, the first time though you have to be careful and I suggest watching my video to see uh, exactly how to do it but guys you know this is just so much fun I mean something like a date just or an OP it's the same watch every day or even my sub that I had before this GMT I mean yeah the sub is great but it's the same watch every single day I mean I look down and it's the exact same watch you know this is just so much fun I mean like it gives you something to do beyond just owning the watch it's like collecting these bezels having both bracelets not to mention straps and, and stuff I'm always changing the strap constantly going between oyster and jubilee which i have here i mean I'm, I'm always switching it around always and there's so many combinations of jubilee and and coke or oyster and fat font pepsi like it's just i have so many different watches in just one watch and so that's why I love this watch so much. It's just so much fun. So yeah, you know, have fun with it yourself. I mean, if you own this watch, buy some bezel inserts. It really changes the entire look and character of the watch. It's like you're wearing a totally different watch. You know, and for those of you who are considering getting this watch, honestly, I really would get it before prices become absurd, like the, like the current Pepsi or the current Batman. I really suggest that you buy this watch if you're considering if if you're not if it's just like already way out of your price range i totally understand that but if you're on the fence do it okay sell your op or sell your your date just sell your sub to get this watch i promise you it's just so much more fun and the hunt that hunt that you know you you have when you're buying a new watch you can still do it with these bezel inserts you can still be on the hunt i'm always on the hunt like i said i'm on the hunt for that maroon red coke I really want that bezel, but I'm not going to pay four or 500 bucks for it. So I'm going to wait until I find one that's well priced. And you know, so you're still on the hunt, even though you have the watch. And normally with being on the hunt with watches, you have like thousands of dollars set aside to pull the trigger when you do find that watch. But this, you're not spending thousands. You're spending like a few hundred every few months or however often you buy a bezel it's it's still relatively affordable and it's something that you can do as as a hobby on top of being you know a watch collector so it's just it's great man this watch is just a totally different experience than i would say most any other rolex to be honest um but there you go guys that's my video I, if you have questions please ask me in the comments i do answer questions you can look at any of my old videos and you'll see that most comments have a response by me uh if not a response they have a heart which means that i have seen the comment i have read your comment if there's no heart i didn't read the comment so if you have a question ask me I'm beyond happy to answer the question and talk about this stuff, but until next time, peace out.